Hello, and welcome to our program, Astronomy for Everyone. The topic for this month's show is astronomy activities, and specifically for this show, we're going to be talking about solar eclipse viewing. With me here in the studio to talk about that topic is Steve Whitty. Steve, thanks. We're thanks here for, again. Yeah, we're here again. Thanks. Now, when it comes to solar viewing, uh, both Steve and I and every astronomer is of a like mind that you never, ever, 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 ever look at the sun with your eyes. You can do immediate irreparable damage uh, to them, so only do this in a safe manner. And the technique that we're going to show you in this program is one of the uh, safe methods to, to view the sun. Uh, also, if this is done by children, uh, adult supervision, uh, especially by adults who know what they're doing, it's always important as well, that they be there to monitor what the kids are doing. So, Stephen, this uh, exercise that you did uh, back in the day. Uh, can you give us a little bit of background about this activity? Yeah, uh, so uh, about a year ago I found some pictures in my basement and uh, I was looking, you know, I looked through them and um, I was at scout camp in these pictures. I was, uh, I, I didn't actually, when I looked at the pictures I didn't know how old I was or when I had taken the pictures, um, but I was at scout camp, there was a uh, partial solar eclipse, and I showed the kids the eclipse, and uh, apparently I knew how to do that safely. Um, I would do As it. we'll see a little bit yeah, later exactly. so, in the show. Now, uh, you had a little, like you say, you weren't quite sure when, but you were able to kind of narrow it down initially to two different dates? Yeah, the first date was 1970, we could get that image up. Um, so, uh, in 1970, the uh, the the dark blue line, it goes right up the eastern coast of the United States and that is the path that the shadow of the moon was on the earth. So that's the area in, of totality. And you were living along the east coast at that time? I was living in Connecticut uh, and the scout camp is in Connecticut. In fact, it's in southern Connecticut. And uh, I, I was sure that this was, this was the one because um, uh, uh, it, it got cold. It got cold during the day, so it was it was hot, and then as the shadow came in, uh, uh, it got cold. I, I was amazed. I needed a jacket. I wanted a jacket anyway. But they determined that uh, that maybe wasn't the date, and there was another one yeah. that was more. Uh... Yeah. The other clue was that uh, um, uh, the pictures said uh, November uh, '72, uh, suggesting 1972, um, but I was terrible. I was absolutely awful at developing the film that I had taken. So I'd shoot film, I'd shoot a whole roll of film, and then sometimes years would go by and I'd finally uh, develop it. So the date of um, uh, when it was developed uh, only is as late as it could possibly be. It, it doesn't really mean that's when it was. So the first one was in 1970. That's right. And, and the second one was in 1972. How did you uh, eliminate that 1970 date? Was there, in looking at the dates on the eclipse, uh, did that not fall into this scout summer camp uh, situation? So, uh, exactly. The 1970 eclipse happened in March, and uh, the scout camp was in June, July, or August. I didn't even know what month it was, but it was in June, July, or August. It was summer. hot, for yeah. one thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and so the 1970 eclipse didn't fit from that perspective. So then you went with the second date. So uh, the second date was in July of 1972. So that's, that was about right. And this eclipse, you can see, it goes through northern, it goes through northern Alaska. Uh, it goes through northern Canada. Uh, and it goes through Nova Scotia. Okay. And uh, but they both go into, through Nova, Nova Scotia, as it turns out. I, uh, when I was researching this, uh, I, I had in the back of my mind the Carly Simon uh, tune, "You're So Vain," and yes, it yes. and it <laughs> and it has a line. Uh, 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 you flew a Learjet to Nova Scotia in the to sun see the total to eclipse. see the total eclipse of the sun. Right. And um, uh, uh, I got interested in that little tidbit, and it turns out uh, from Wikipedia, it turns out that um, Carly Simon uh, said that she had written her song in 1971. So she was talking about the 1970 eclipse, not the 72 eclipse. Okay. I was thinking that I had seen the 70 eclipse, but it was in fact the 72 
by uh, just the, the time of year that the 72 eclipse, that's right. yeah. eclipse occurred. So uh, yeah. having uh, cleared up uh, that little mystery for yourself, again, all sure. these sure. years later, uh, you've got some images for us with you at this uh, Boy Scout camp. That's right, yeah. So I, I just wanted to introduce the camp. Uh, Sleepy Hollow, the sign says on the top, Sleepy Hollow is uh, a camp for just one troop at probably what they called Camp Pequot at Lake of Isles Scout Reservation in Connecticut. Again, oh, in Connecticut. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it's in southern Connecticut. Um, uh, if, if it had been the 1970 eclipse, we could have, it would have been less than 50 miles to get to the area of totality. You might have to go uh, to Long Island Sound, which would have been across uh, seven or eight miles of water, but um, you'd, you were really close. Okay. Uh, so here you were at the summer camp in uh, 1972 with the Boy Scouts. That's right, yeah. So I would have been 13 in 72 okay. doing this. So, you know, I, I knew a fair amount, um, but I do not remember learning how to do the technique that, uh, that uh, I actually used. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that, I guess. All right. Okay. So, uh, again, we're at the, the scout camp. I think there's some more images that you can share with us about that. Sure. Um, so this is... Uh, uh, the Lake of Isles, there was a lake there. In fact, I, I remember I swam a mile um, in this lake. Uh, so they had a fleet of boats. They had some sailboats, they had uh, some canoes, and they had some rowboats. And you'd have two scouts in a rowboat with a pole uh, keeping watch over, I think it was two to four swimmers, I forget, maybe it was just two swimmers, uh, who would swim behind the boat. And, uh, and there was a course that was laid out with buoys, and uh, you swam this huge circuit uh, that was a mile, in, you know, and you came back to basically the, the shore. Um, it was freezing cold. The water was freezing cold. We did it in the morning before breakfast. Oh, my. Yeah, really. <laughs> Almost sounds like boot camp than scout camp. It, it really was. The accommodations look a tad Spartan, too. Yeah, so uh, they had tents. Uh, the tents had uh, eight bunks, that is, four sets of uh, bunk beds, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so you'd have eight kids in each tent. There is a, a wooden floor, so you're off the ground. You're off the f ground by uh, a couple feet. Uh, and, but you'd have maybe a foot locker, or you, maybe you'd have just a duffel bag and a sleeping bag. And um, the, the sides of the tent flapped down, so um, the insects weren't too bad. Uh, All right. So with this knowledge you had to, uh, to use, um, you brought it to the, the fellows in the scout troop, and we just saw, I think, the image come up. I know, did you want that up again with uh, you and your cohorts? Oh, sure. So, uh, yeah, normally I don't uh, show pictures of juveniles uh, on TV without their permission, but everyone here is over 50. Uh, so, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, time, so, time flies. Yeah, so, and one of those is me. Do you know which one? Do um, you have a guess? Boy, I'm going to take a guess. The, the scout on the left as we're facing the screen? Uh, it's a good guess, uh, but I wasn't wearing glasses at the time, so that okay. wasn't me. Okay. I was wearing stripes. Oh, you had the stripes? I had the was stripes, you? yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. Oh, wouldn't have guessed Yeah, it. I, I uh, gave a talk about this uh, in the past year, and uh, I asked about 40 members of the audience, uh, and nobody got it. I mean, they would have been better off, like, rolling dice and seeing what came up. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, so we've got this uh, big adventure at the, uh, at the scout camp. Uh, did you attend any other type of camps to learn astronomy at that time? Sure. Um, so I don't know what year, but it was definitely before this, I think. I, I probably was uh, in elementary school. Uh, there was a day camp, uh, an astronomy day camp, believe it or not. Uh, now, of course, astronomy is done at night for the most part, so this was an, a day camp that was held at night. Uh, and the format was that they'd have a lecture, and I think it was like an hour. And it would, in that time, it would get dark, because it was, it was held in the summer, so it got dark quite late. True. And, um, and then uh, we would do, we would go out, and they had some uh, Dobsonian telescopes, maybe six or, or so inches in diameter, and they had an observatory. This was uh, Talcott Mountain Observatory. Uh, it's on top of one of the ridges in, um, 
uh, in the Appalachian mountain chain. Okay. And uh, they, had a, uh, they had a telescope. And I remember things about it that can't possibly be right, you know, how big it was and so on. Yeah. But, uh, uh, but I got to see, I remember seeing Saturn. Uh, it was gorgeous. Uh, through this telescope. So it's possible you might have learned some of this technique that you use for the eclipse? Yeah, well, there, there were plenty of lectures. I don't specifically remember doing this, but I, I might have. Now, there, I also had some books at home. I had the Golden, uh, the Golden Guide series. Uh, I don't remember that they were particularly valuable uh, or useful, uh, so I don't know where I learned this. I probably learned it at, the, at this camp, at this astronomy camp. All right, interesting. Well, what we're going to do right now is uh, take a short break. Uh, we've got the actual uh, solar eclipse viewing coming up in the second half. Uh, if you would uh, like to get more information, you can visit our website. Uh, we have that address for you down at the bottom of our screen. And right after this break for term of the month, we'll be back with more solar eclipse viewing. The term of the month for November 2014 is Laniakea. What we're trying to get at is where are we in the universe? And where we are in this diagram is a dark blue dot uh, toward the right uh, of, uh, you know, in the center of the screen, but in, toward the right of this circled area. Laniakea is uh, a Hawaiian name meaning uh, sort of unimaginable space. It's, it's a huge structure, 500,000 uh, um, light years across. And what happened was that uh, recently Hawaiian astronomers uh, mapped about 8,000 galaxies, and not just wh where they are, but how fast they're moving. And it turns out that galaxies move in flows, almost like a river and uh, the whole structure sort of becomes apparent when, when this happens. And we're at the edge of this structure. Gravitationally, there's another structure that is not very far from us. So, we live on the Earth, in, uh, going around the Sun, in, uh, uh, oh, in the Milky Way galaxy, in the local group, in the structure we now call Laniakea. That's where we are, term of the month for November 2014. Welcome back. The topic for this month's program is solar eclipse viewing. And uh, with this topic, we want to again repeat the warning that we gave you in the first part of the show. Never, ever, ever look at the sun with your eyes or with any unapproved device. Uh, the only type of approved device or method to view the sun would be either a solar filter that fits onto the front of the telescope, not one of these old solar filters, or two by eyepiece projection. We'll get back now with Steve Whitty, who's going to tell us about the technique that he used to view the uh, solar eclipse back in the day, Steve. Yeah, all right, so really the first thing that, I did, that happened, right, the eclipse was imminent in a few minutes, I don't know how long, and <clears throat> I had prepped the troop, just my local troop, not the whole camp, just my local troop, so maybe, I don't know, 20 guys or so. Um, I had prepped them with, oh, this is the time of the eclipse, and I'd be showing it, right? I didn't really do much uh, preparation. I just sort of told them what we're going to do. And so a few minutes before the eclipse, I grabbed my telescope and I grabbed uh, a notebook and, uh, and I picked up a chair that was uh, in the camp somewhere and I, I um, gathered everybody to follow me and we went into a parking lot. It was just a dirt parking lot uh, and I set up. So the telescope has a tabletop mount and I put that on the chair. I pointed it at the sun. Now you don't look along the telescope to point it at the sun. You actually use the shadow of the telescope. Exactly. In order to uh, point the telescope right away. And when you look at the uh, image that, um, that is projected, uh, you can, uh, it's obvious that you've got the sun in it. And this technique is called eyepiece projection. Eyepiece projection. So you still have to focus the eyepiece 
uh, and you still have to, uh, 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 the distance between the telescope and the, and the notebook, you have to right. sort of set that, that as well. Like so uh, either I got a rock or somebody got a rock to, put, to, to lean the notebook against it so that the notebook would be more or less perpendicular to the direction the telescope was pointing so that you wouldn't have a stretched image, you would have a, sure. a, a yeah. you know, a, a, the image would, you know, the, the sun would be round, that kind of thing. So, um, so that's, that was the first thing. We could go to the next slide. Um, so the notebook had a piece of paper here, and it, it's an envelope, right? So I have no idea. I had an envelope. I, uh, I, I had remembered that I had taped it to the notebook, but I'm not sure that I really did that. Um, uh, I've got another sort of thing uh, on the notebook, and it's not even white, so that was not particularly good. Um, but basically, the idea is you have a white surface to uh, a nice white flat surface to, yes. to project on. Uh, so the the black part, the, the little crescent, that's the sun, and the black part, that is the moon in front of the sun, uh, taking a big chunk out of the otherwise circular sun. Right. So normally, when you do this sort of thing. Uh, on this, if you if you just have the sun, you can see sunspots this way. Uh, w with this sort of uh, an image, you've got an image that's that's fairly sizable, and you can see lots of detail if there is any detail to be seen. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And of course, using this eyepiece projection, you can have a number of people viewing this at the same time rather than just one at the eyepiece. That's, that's right. That's right. In fact, we'll see in some of the uh, the next images uh, that we'll have. Uh, you can see people's feet. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So the next image, uh, the uh, the images get brighter and darker. That has more to do with the camera than uh, whether it was actually brighter or darker darker outside at the time. And and what I could do with the pictures, uh, uh, you know. So I had scanned them, and I I tried to I had to crop them for the show, and I also had to um, uh, brighten them or improve improve their contrast. Uh, it was an Instamatic camera, which produces square pictures. Yes, they uh, did. And uh, um, uh, it was uh, uh, finished with a matte finish, which is hard to scan. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so you can, you can kind of see uh, that there's a, a book underneath uh, the envelope, and uh, the book says something like um, Boy Scout requirements. So it was just something I had hanging around. So there's very little preparation here that really went on. Sort of uh, off the, uh, the yeah, cuff here. Yeah, right? off the cuff. I don't remember ever um, uh, uh, experimenting with just the telescope and the setup with the sun to make sure that I could get it focused, that I knew what I was doing. I don't remember doing any of that. I just went out and I did it and it worked. There we go. It, it doesn't turn out to be that hard. All right. Well, I noticed, too, as we were going through those images slowly, that we, you could see the uh, portion of the sun that was still showing was getting smaller. Uh, did you want to kind of go through again and take out a little bit more? Yeah, why don't we do that? But let's, uh, let's take maybe 10 seconds. I, there are just a couple things to point out, 10 seconds per shot. Uh, there are just a couple things that I wanted to uh, see if I could spot. Can we just uh, get to the first one? Okay, so uh, in this, this can't be the first one. Oh, that's the last one. Let me see. Looks like we've got a couple of other All different right, so, shots just yeah. using the notebook without the white sheet. Yeah, I don't know what happened to the uh, envelope. It had been working so great. Ah, there uh, we go. All right, so here we are at the beginning, and we, you can see a sneaker in the upper left-hand corner uh, of the screen. Uh, and it's a, we get to see a sneaker later. Um, but it's a different sneaker, so you know it was multiple people, and that might have been my arm as a shadow in this one. And you can also see the 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 moon moving across the sun if we as if, as we move across these things. Let's go to the next one, uh, and then maybe the next one, and and the next one. It's probably getting really cold by now. I noticed too the. The envelope isn't quite as white. I'm just because of the reduced sunlight. Um, I mean, you're not, possibly, yeah. possibly, but it also might be uh, the way the camera worked and the way the uh, post processing worked. And then we go on. Uh, let's see. So here's another sneaker. You can see. Uh, you can also see the shadow of the telescope. So you can see the the tripod of the telescope. The yes, legs. You can. 
The legs of the tripod are only maybe a foot long. They're not very long. Again, you meant it was a tabletop, but not a it floor. It was a tabletop. One of the things that was hard to do with this telescope and why I needed the chair was that you can't look straight up. So the eyepiece is actually below the level of the chair. Ah, okay. Um, so, yeah. And then for some reason I lost the envelope, and uh, you can hardly see what's going on. Uh, even on the computer scan, even on the original photo, it's hard to see what's going on. And then finally, I think, this is the last one. Um, so the, the shadow has moved um, most of the way off of the, off of the, uh, off of the sun by now. Um, I did have, you mentioned, uh, you know, don't look at the sun uh, even naked eye. One of the kids in the troop said, oh, uh, you know, it's not going to hurt me. I can look straight at the sun. And, you know, like I was 13, but some of the kids were bigger and older than I was. And, mm -hmm. you know, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> well, hopefully there was some adult supervision that intervened. And uh... Uh, He actually, I don't think he looked long enough. And uh, I don't think that there was any permanent damage. Well, let's hope not. But um, when you're looking at the sun, your eyes actually don't have pain sensation. No, they don't. No. And so you can, you're, you can become uh, uh, damaged without having the sensation. Fry your that, retina and you won't feel yeah. a thing. And, and looking, through, uh, looking through any kind of optics, binoculars or a telescope, uh, without a solar filter, um, uh, you know, if, if, um, even with this small telescope, if you put a uh, piece of paper at the focal point, uh, it will catch fire. With the yes. <laughs> so, so if your eye was there, yes. that's really, really bad, and really bad instantly. Now, you had this equipment available to you um, as a scout. Uh, it was very rudimentary, but you still had it. Now, if people would want to do this for themselves, Hopefully they would do some research and again follow the safety guidelines of not looking at it directly. Uh, if they don't have the equipment or the knowledge, what can someone do to do this? Well, there are, there are a couple things that they can do. One of the things is very, very simple. You can take a paper clip and poke a little hole in a cardboard box and, you get, and that makes uh, a pinhole projection uh, uh, sort of instrument and okay. inside the box you get an image of the sun. All right. Uh, now, it's, if the box is not very big, uh, really, it needs to be long, right? So the distance between the hole and the projection surface needs to be fairly far. Uh, I've done it at like a foot and a half, and the, and the image is really small. You really can't see much detail. But, so uh, the longer it is, the larger the image. But I, uh, I've, I've been meaning to uh, get a, a, like one of those shipping tubes you know, for posters. Oh, yes. That will be like three feet long or something, and you'd get a bigger image that way. You okay. Know? cut out a, a, like a, a portion of the bottom so that you get a, an image and put a, a, you know, tape a white piece of paper at the bottom. Another way for them to view uh, any type of eclipse, be it solar or lunar, would be to contact a local area astronomy club, perhaps at a science center, even a local observatory. Yeah, in the Detroit area there are eight, eight astronomy clubs and all of them have uh, monthly outreach events um, for at least part of the year. I know the Warren Club uh, and others have year-round monthly um, public events. Um, the Detroit area also has astronomy at the beach in the... In, the, um, in September. In the, yeah. in, usually in September, but in the fall. It was in August one year. Mm -hmm. um, and we also have a spring event. Uh, and, uh, and, and so that's also open to the public uh, at Metro Beach. And I'm sure if you went online, I'm sure you could see plenty of YouTube videos of... Uh, oh, yeah. Images, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank uh, our guest, Steve Witte, for uh, being with us today to talk about his adventures in solar eclipse viewing as, as a scout. And uh, we encourage everyone to get out there and take a look at the night sky. Again, if it's during the day, be very careful with the sun. We can't overemphasize that. But if you uh, have any questions, uh, you can send us an email. Of course, uh, we have our email address at the bottom of the screen. And coming up next with Stephen is What's Up in the Night Sky. Thanks for watching.
What's up in the night sky for November 2014? Uh, November 2nd it marks the beginning of daylight savings time, so there's a little bit of time confusion this month. Uh, so these numbers for sunrise and sunset are for the 2nd of November and later, because um, it's most of the month. Sunrise, the, mo the month starts at about 7 a.m. and sunset, uh, and by the end of the month, sunrise is 7.40. And sunset starts the month at about 5.25, and by the end of the month, it's 5 o'clock. So the, the days are still getting shorter. The shortest days are in December. The phases of the moon are on Fridays this month. Uh, we start with a full moon on the 6th. On the 14th, we have third quarter. Uh, the, the moon is new on the 22nd, and uh, first quarter, so evening, um, so, uh, evening, evening moon rises on the uh, 29th of uh, uh, November. Mars sets at 8 p.m., so it's not very long after the 5 p.m. sunset. So um, you want to see Mars when it's fairly high in the sky, so you want to see it um, uh, closer to sunset than to when it sets. So that's closer to 5 p.m., so maybe 5.30 p.m. Uh, Saturn won't be visible at all. We have uh, superior conjunction. That's when the Earth, the Sun, and Saturn are all lined up, and Saturn's on the other side of the Sun from us, so we won't see it at all. That superior conjunction happens on November 18th. Uranus and Neptune are kind of morning objects. Uranus sets, uh, so it's up all night, but it sets at 5 a.m. Uh, at and then at the, at the end of the month, 3 a.m., and Neptune sets at 1.30 a.m., and at the end of the month, uh, 10.40 p.m. So it's, it's becoming, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're rolling those things into the evening. Jupiter rises at uh, 1.20 a.m., and then later rises at 10.40 a.m., so that's really rolling into the, our big uh, bright planet. So here on the 14th, uh, we happen to be next to the moon. Uh, Mercury is a morning object, and it is best on the 1st. Now, because of the daylight savings time, that's 7, 10 a.m., just before sunrise. So, really, do not look at the sun, so stop what you're doing before sunrise. If you look at Weather Underground, for your zip code, you can find out when the sunrise and sunset is for where you are, and that's a really good, uh, a good way to do that. Uh, don't, don't miss the Leonid meteor shower, uh, the mornings of November 17th or 18th. 18th should be the peak, but you really should try the 17th as well. Um, uh, you should expect 10 to 15 per hour. And that is What's Up in the Night Sky for November 2014. Mm -hmm.